All right, take any part of a scale that you know that features three notes on one string, then three notes on the next string. This could be a fragment of a three note per string scale you know, like this one. Or it could be a piece of that Dorian blues scale hybrid thing that your stepdad uses with his shitty band all the time. Now, if you put a symmetrical pattern like that in the hands of most players, they'll probably play up and down it like little scale playing robots. And that can be cool. There's a time and a place for scale bots in music. But you can get some really interesting phrasing ideas going on if you incorporate scale relays into your playing. Scale relay is where we pick a certain note to walk up to in the scale and then walk our way back. And whenever you have a symmetrical pattern like we're talking about, I see there's being three different combinations. There's the short walk where we take it up to the fourth note and back. The medium walk where we take it up to the fifth note and back. And then the long one where we go all the way up to the sixth note and back. You can combine those relays in interesting and unpredictable ways to get some really cool sounds. And there's a simple formula of how to combine them together to make them fit inside of a measure line. And once you know that formula, you'll be able to create weapons of musical destruction, like this one. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Now you guys know I enjoy myself a three note per string scale shape just as much as the next Shred Eye Knight, but I'm always trying to find new ways to mix up our phrasing inside of that to get cool and interesting sounds. The other day I was thinking about scale relays, which is a way of practicing scales that my old guitar sensei Benjamin Franklin showed me back in the day. It's kind of sort of based around that thing that you used to do in gym class where you'd run like to the first line on the court and back, then to the next line on the court and back and so on, until you've covered the entire thing up and down. Only we're doing that inside of scales. We're walking up to a certain note all the way back, then to the next note in the scale and all the way back. It's not only a great way to learn and master new scale patterns, it's also a really cool thing to incorporate into your playing and phrasing, like what you heard in that opening etude. On today's lesson, I'm gonna show you guys the idea behind this, show you how to play the thing, and give you some technical tips along the way to help you master this idea. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today for a ton of bonus goodies, including extra videos, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel is going to get a metric butt-ton of stuff. You're going to get the downloadable guitar profile to go along with the etude, downloadable tabs, practice tracks that I made at a variety of different tempos, and so much more. You're also going to get a very special Patreon exclusive video about scale relays, showing you how to learn them, how to practice them, and how they can improve you as a player by helping you understand scales and intervals way more better. So don't delay. Sign up today. Gearwise for today's video, I'll be playing my beloved Sir Modern Satin into my Synergy rig. I've got the Friedman BEDLX module in there right now, and it sounds smoking tasty good. I've got that running into the UA aux as always. Now let's hear that sick etude again at step dance speed.
Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the magic formula you need to know to make these relays fit inside of a measure. It's pretty easy to understand. Now, like I said in the intro, we got three different kinds of relays. I'm gonna be using this little fragment of the E minor scale right here. The short relay will have us walking up to the fourth note of the scale and back. One, two, three, four, and back. The medium one has us walking all the way up to the fifth note of the scale and back. One, two, three, four, five. And then what I call the long one has us walking all the way up to the top note of the scale, the sixth one, and back. One, two, three, four, five, six. The formula that you gotta know to make this stuff fit rhythmically inside of two measures of 16th notes is like this. Any combination of the short relay, two of the medium relays, and one use of the long relay, will yield two measures of 16th notes. So that could be medium, short, medium, long. That could be long, medium, short, medium. Any combination of those four things you can think of. But as long as it's one short, two mediums, one long, it's gonna end up grooving really nicely. Let's try a few of those out while I count along here. Let's do short, medium, medium, long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. We could try long, medium, medium, short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. We could mix them up and do long, medium, short, medium. Let's try that out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It'll always work out evenly as long as you use those things in that combination. So the cool thing is, is we've been using these as 16th notes so far with that magic formula of short, medium, medium, long, and you're gonna work out inside of a measure, right? But what if you're playing with triplets instead of 16th notes, right? Trip on the trip on the trip on the trip on the trip. Well, there's a magic combination for making these work too, and it's actually even more straightforward. If you use any combination that goes short, medium, long, it'll fit inside a measure as triplets. So let me just do it that way, short, medium, long. One palette, two palette, three palette, four palette, one palette, two palette, three palette, four palette, one. Works out evenly in two measures of triplets as well. So again, I can mix that up however I want to. It could go medium, short, long. Long, short, medium. And it'll work out just fine as triplets. If you can get your mitts wrapped around those different relay shapes and learn the rhythmic formulas that we talked about, the cool thing is, is you can spit those out in really unusual combinations and to the listener it just sounds like you're going totally off the cuff and still somehow rhythmically landing on your feet at the end of a phrase, but to you the player you'll just be playing some pre-memorized stuff that you know is going to work every single time. So with that neoclassical style etude that I wrote for you guys to practice these concepts and master them, it's based around the D and G strings, it's all using alternate picking, and it follows a chord progression that sounds like E minor, B major, C major, B major. It's gonna follow four different three by three scale shapes. First one looks like this. The next one here is gonna dip into that harmonic minor scale a little bit to follow that B major sound. It looks like this. I'll correct myself, it's actually B Phrygian dominant because of the harmony going on there. It's not E harmonic minor anymore if it's being played over a B chord. Anyway, next one is this guy right here. And then lastly, to keep it interesting, I use this fragment of the melodic minor scale against the B major. It sounds like this. Kind of a suitably Bach choice considering the Bach and forth nature of this etude. So now that you have those fragments down, we can start talking about the sequencing idea that we're using with these relays. Now, the first section of the etude follows this pattern. It's gonna go short, medium, long, medium in every one of those fragments. So using the first scale shape, we're gonna be going short, medium, long, and then medium. 
gonna sound like this. After that, we're gonna change to the next scale shape and play the same idea. Short, medium, long, medium. We're gonna jump down to the C shape right here, same idea. And then lastly, the melodic minor fragment, same phrasing idea. We're gonna change this up a little bit here at the end. So we're gonna shift gears and go to some different ideas here at the end. Sounds like this. Here I had a rest on that last F sharp note at the end of that last medium pattern. I want you to use that rest break while we're holding that F sharp note to get ready to change gears for the next sequence right here, which is gonna follow a pattern that goes long, medium, short, medium, okay? So this time we're gonna start with the long walk up, the medium, shrink it down to the short pattern, and then go to the medium pattern again. Long, medium, short, medium. One more time. Same idea with the next fragment. Going down to C. And your last fragment here with that same pause at the end. And then resolve back here on E. So all together we got all those fragments going short, medium, long, medium, and then all those fragments going long, medium, short, medium. And it's all gonna fit nicely inside of those measure lines. So like I mentioned, this is all designed to be used with alternate picking. I wouldn't advise doing any kind of economy stuff in here. Some of you guys might be tempted to initially go down, up, down, down when you're playing that first fragment. I think it's just gonna lead to nothing but trouble when you have to go back to alternate picking some of the other phrases. Like as soon as you do that double down, you've gotta do an up here again, so it kind of defeats the purpose. So just alternate pick your way through this. All of the string changes due to the phrasing of this are gonna be outside changes. So really focus on that last downstroke on the D string, flinging out and getting under the G string. And the opposite goes here. Whenever you do that last upstroke on any of the G string passages, make sure that guy really flips out of the strings and gets above the D string. You want that last pick stroke on every string to be the elevator that takes you to the next string. So in other words, if you're making little tiny baby pick strokes like this, you're now a mile away from where you need to be to play the next note. So make sure that your last note on a string is what I call a launcher. It's a pick stroke that launches your pick out towards the next string that you're going to. Another really cool thing about these relays is because of the unusual note groupings, you can use this as a great way to learn how to control your pick even more better by placing accents on the first group of every 16th notes. So in other words, the first note of every four note grouping gets picked more harder than the others. You could also just think about that as making all the other notes quieter, right? Dynamics don't just go up, they go both ways. Just like your mom does, I had to include that in there. So if you wanna get more control out of your picking, try to use those accents to really um, lay into that first note of every grouping. It's not always gonna be here.
it's going to land in all different places inside of those relays. It's a really great way to learn how to get more control out of your picking. Same thing goes through if you're practicing these as triplets. <laughs> Accenting that first note of every triplet is going to be a great way to get more pick control, no matter what combination of the relays it is that you're doing. And again, for 16s, it's going to be one short, two mediums, one long. And for triplets, it's just going to be one of each. One short, one medium, one long. You're always going to land on your feet right where you want to for that quality downbeat action. So there you go guys, an action-packed lesson on some quality phraseology to add into your three note per string playing. Whether you're playing blues or jazz or blaz, this is gonna work out anywhere that you've got three notes on one string, three notes on the next string, or your money back guaranteed. If you wanna get even more out of this video, be sure to check out that Patreon page today. That's where you're gonna get the guitar profile for the etude, the MIDI file so you can make your own practice tracks, the downloadable tab, all the goods, everything you want, as well as that very special bonus video showing you guys the power of learning and practicing scale relays. It really does help a lot. I also uploaded this uh, alternate picking video to my Patreon a couple weeks ago that has been blowing people's minds. I've been getting a lot of good feedback on it. It might be the missing piece of the puzzle if you've ever struggled with pick slanting and getting your picking to feel good and smooth at high speeds. This might finally be the breakthrough that you've been waiting for. So be sure to check that out. That's available to all supporters, even for just a buck a month. Thanks so much for watching the video. Be sure to like it, hit subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, all the other stuff that makes us tubers happy. It really does help out a lot. And be sure to tune in next time where we'll be talking about something else cool that I've not decided yet. Let me know what you guys want to see down there in the comments section. Well, I think I'm off to grab myself some lunch. I recommend you guys get that guitar out Shut that computer down and go do some shredding. Less clicking, more picking.